What does it mean to take care of the soul? The soul is eternal, indestructible, can never be harmed uh, or by anything material. So what does it mean to take care or to feed the soul or to nourish the soul? It means that we cultivate impressions of spiritual quality. Now, this is something that I, I'm always uh, surprised to find that people misunderstand again and again. What is the difference between material and spiritual? Tangible, intangible, temporal, eternal, manifest, unmanifest. Remember earlier we talked about subjective? Spiritual things are always subjective. External, internal, difference between matter and spirit. So matter is always changing. Spirit is always the same. We don't ever change our spiritual identity. But our material identity is changing all the time. Material truth is relative. Spiritual truth is absolute. So when we fill our minds with material impressions of the senses, we're not feeding the soul. We're feeding the body the bodily conception of life, bodily identity and activities and so on. But when we fill our minds with truths that have impressions that have these qualities, that's spiritual truth, absolute truth. That is called feeding the soul or caring for the soul. We need spiritual activity, spiritual knowledge. We need spiritual impressions to nourish our real identity, our real self. When we see who we are against the background of knowledge of God, then we realize who we really are. Our spiritual self is defined by our relationship with God. So all these things combine to take care of the soul. We need some spiritual process or some spiritual activity. What does God want from us? Love. Well, what if we can't do that? Then what? We have to follow the rules in the scriptures. Yeah. That's how we know God. That's how we come to love God. Okay, what if we can't do that? Everybody tells me, I can't give up eating meat. <laughs> So what if you can't do that? He says, work for me. That means giving up the results of your work to advance the cause of God. Uh, building churches, publishing scriptures, uh, sponsoring courses, festivals, all these kind of spiritual activities that benefit humanity. Huh? Everyone should give some percentage of the results of their work for God's work. Otherwise, our work drags us down. This is another thing that I've seen again and again and again over many years, that if someone does not uh, dedicate their work for God, at least some percentage of they can't maintain their spiritual practice. Over time, they'll dry up. They won't be able to continue the chanting. 
I've seen this again and, and again. And if we can't do this, then what? Cultivate knowledge. Not just any knowledge. Knowledge of God. That's the only real knowledge. Absolute truth. Absolute truth. And if you can't do that, <laughs> there's not a whole lot we can do for you. <laughs> huh? So this this is this is God's priorities for us. This is given in Bhagavad Gita. He says, love me and surrender to me completely. That's what he really wants. If you can't do that, it's okay. It's okay. Follow the rules in the scriptures. So that means chanting, uh, you know, giving up meat, intoxication, illicit sex, gambling, speculation, studying the scriptures, and so on. So. And if you can't do that, work for him. Ah, there's a wonderful story about my spiritual master. When he first came to the United States, he was very poor. In fact, he was homeless for some time. And he, yeah, he was, he was living in the Bowery in New York. It's a heavy neighborhood, it's like the barrio. Yeah, yeah. So um, he met many other homeless men. So one day after he got his temple and he had some disciples and things were going, he's sitting there giving class and this homeless man comes in. And you know, this guy's a homeless man. He's a mess. You know, it smells bad, everything, right? He comes and he has... He has a box of toilet paper. And he comes in the room, like walks right in front of everybody, <laughs> uh, goes over to the bathroom, puts the toilet paper, and then he walks out. Yeah. See you, Swamiji. <laughs> and uh, what did Prabhupada say? Did he say, oh, throw him out, he's disturbing the class? No. No. He said, he said now... He is working for God, just see. Uh, because he could take that, he could take the toilet paper and sell it and get whatever he wants. But he didn't do that. He brought it to the temple because he knew they needed toilet paper. Uh, so even a bum can work for God. Uh, because you can't take it with you, folks. <laughs> you can't, but you can take the spiritual merit that you earn. So even if you can't do this, you can't work for God, then cultivate knowledge. Because by cultivation of knowledge, you'll realize, oh, life is temporary. Everything material is going to go away. So I have to cultivate spiritual life. So I better do this. <laughs> and this, and this. <laughs> but if you can't cultivate knowledge, I don't know. You know there's, there's not a whole lot we can do to help someone unless they're willing to at least hear. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate